And we are live. Welcome to another episode of Business Focus Live with me, John, where we talk about business-related topics as well as news from here and around the world. If you're new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe. And let's get started. And we're back. Thank you again for joining me today. So today is October 28th. So it's getting closer. Two months away from from December, Christmas season. Anyway, so we'll be talking about some interesting things happening this past week or so. So uh, here are some of the things we'll be talking about. None more so than the first topic uh, I, I, I mentioned is regarding you know the 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 power requirements of of the latest GPUs and CPUs of our desktops, uh, computers, and obviously with the growing demand for better, faster uh, processing speed capability. Uh, you know whatever you, you can think of in in terms of daily usage for for different applications and uh, obviously being able to shrink shrink the the processor themselves into a, a small minute device uh, obviously the, the the more power it generates or requirements to be able to generate more 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 efficiency more power uh, there's always the 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 counterpart of heat and what's to be done about this are we go getting to the point that it's being on the extreme level, does the consumer even need to worry about this? So we'll talk about that. Uh, next, we'll be talking about another TV show that Amazon is planning on on showcasing, and uh, I have my doubts as you know the how how the Rings of Power have turned out, and now you have uh, another game that's being developed to a TV show, uh, the Fallout series. I, I have. Optimism, obviously, but there's skepticism regarding of how things could turn out based on, you know, from the, not just Amazon, but from the other uh, network streaming services who's offering, trying to convert popular IPs into a TV series well, to varying degrees of uh, success and failure here. Uh, third, we'll be talking about how the considered Warren Buffett of Asia, or in China in particular, has come into some... Um, trouble, so maybe not necessarily a comparable uh, assumption or comparable uh, comparison with regards to Mr. Uh, Buffett here. We're talking of uh, Fosum's uh, CEO here who who has mismanaged his company and is on a fire sale here. So we'll talk about that. Uh, next is in the restaurant industry in, in particular, you might notice some of the restaurants you might be frequenting are not up to full capacity. We're not talking about uh, co co customers here frequenting, but in terms of uh, people servicing the customers here, you're talking of the the waiters, the waitresses, you know, the the the, the full complements of uh, how to operate a restaurant, a functioning restaurant here. And uh, due to the shortening of hours here, now is it going to be a temporary problem or is it going to be a lingering? issue here especially on the coming uh, holidays here and moving forward so we'll talk about that and lastly you know uh, a very interesting i won't say proposal but has been discussed with regards to here in in the philippines regarding the 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 option of wearing masks in indoor now you know i myself is uh, what what would say that it's not comfortable wearing masks all the time because obviously it's in, it cumbersome and difficult for breathing first and foremost. But obviously, the the, the benefit of it is uh, to 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 protect yourselves and you know protect others from you know if if you were to test positive or you know if you're not feeling well, you know it's just common courtesy here. But you know, uh, is this a good direction that the government is trying to to to, to consider or even implement here? So we'll talk about that. Anyway, so starting off with our first topic, as mentioned, uh, news uh, came about with the you know if you've been following the the, the updates on the GPU shortage. Well, obviously the the normalization of our supply chain. You know, it's getting back to some normalcy of of sorts, and obviously for companies like uh, Nvidia. AMDs uh, and other companies has been trying to 
you know, normalize the production for a yearly cycle, every year producing new versions of, of GPUs. Then you have the CPUs from Intel and AMD and obviously offering new, better processors or GPUs, uh, more power demanding because of the games that uh, people play uh, for video editing and, and whatnot. Uh, obviously, those those components tend to generate a lot of heat and how excessive is those heat so we'll take a closer look here according to uh, techspot.com the rise of power not literally in terms of uh, those cpus and gpus are becoming more power hungry as mentioned so let's take a closer look so according to techspot.com uh, you'll be paying an unnecessary price to pay for those uh, benefits here now how much of a big benefit here you, you know it would depend now obviously it mentions here why chips needs power and obviously to generate more power it, it uh, releases heat and obviously that's why in many cpus or desktop cpus even in laptops fan uh, maintaining a normal temperature not excessively hot uh, or you know uh, crisp to a touch is, is not ideal here and how do you dissipate it obviously make, making sure in the case of my desktop here i have a plethora of fans here spinning the whole time six nine fans uh not considering the the fan that's spinning in the gpu in itself to 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 circulate the airflow you know getting in fresh air then expelling it so that you know it maintains a normal temperature that will not burden or you know uh uh I won't say destroy, but uh, destroys the, the 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 longevity of those components as mentioned here. And obviously, here is mentioned uh, according to uh, GPUs and CPUs are classed as very large scale integration circuits, enormous collection of transistors, resistors, and other electrical components, all microscopic size. And obviously, it can only do so much in a very minute space. Imagine. You know, imagine holding the smartphone, using it in intensively, multitasking, playing games and whatnot. You can feel the heat emanating from the device in itself. And obviously, doing it for long periods of time, you know, has its consequences. It's hot, you know, first and foremost, but the, the long-term effects or the durability of your devices will be hampered here. And that's never uh, ideal. You could do it in short bursts, but not in long durations. And... Imagine that in a bigger scale in your desktops or laptops. Uh, you can just imagine the, 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 the concerns that, you know, users has to merit here. And with the advent of uh, more demanding games, more demanding tools to be able to, you know, crunch those numbers, uh, the computational powers and whatnot. Now, what's interesting here, uh, it mentions here that how powerful uh, the heat that it would generate here. And you can see here that in terms of the heat it, it generates compared to other, you know, uh, compared to the different years, whether it's AMD or Intel here. So you can see AMD is the triangle, red triangle here, while blue team is Intel here, the square uh, shape here. And you can see here that the, the, the power that it generates or the TDP that they call it is, you know, has reached its limits uh, of to how, what is considered desirable here and obviously you see some spikes here on certain years here in 2012 and 2022 but it's only a spike over that particular period but it's not a sustainable because obviously sustaining uh that 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 power necessity is not always beneficial for for your for your devices here anyway if we were to look at here in particular so obviously uh, when you talk of power here, obviously, uh, basic uh, usage of your CPUs or GPUs uh, in terms of power here. So you can see here at the PL1, it can be sustained in terms of uh, long durations of usage. So this is what the, the, the machines can do. And if you were to increase its power level to PL2 in this case, uh, you could sustain it for short bursts, but not long periods. So you can see here from the PL1, it can be sustained indefinitely, technically, but that's an ideal as well. But if you were to increase it further, so a second uh, jump, it can only be sustained for short periods in terms of 100 seconds here. And if you were to go beyond that PL3 and PL4, well, 
uh, obviously can only be sustained you know in sudden spikes in, in this case for up to 10 milliseconds here so you can see here there are sudden spikes but it has to go down to be able to uh to function f uh moving forward but obviously as the, the the demand for faster powerful computing increases obviously there's always a shall we say a a, a tipping effect uh, what would suffer in this case as mentioned that the heat it generates has to be expelled somehow and how do you cool it so that it can be sustained for long periods so meaning your cpu cooler and gpu cooler has to be superior and if you're thinking of liquid cooling your devices uh, is it enough uh, if it's you're using small fans or you need bigger fans whether it's 90 millimeter or 120 millimeter fan here so that would be a case here and here's what's interesting here so you can see here the different generations of uh, Intel processors here. So the, the, the blue bar represents the TDP, the, the power it generates. And the red one implies the PL2, the, the sudden increase of power uh, power here. And you can see here for the eight, uh, six, eight, and ninth generation of i i9 and i7 Intel chips, you know, the, the, the margin, the difference between the TDP and the PL2 is not that far behind. I mean, it's like the, the, the PL2 is slightly high, bigger in terms of maybe a, a quarter compared to the TDP. But uh, as you can see in the ninth generation, the 9900KS, uh, the, 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 the TDP has increased slightly. And obviously the, the PL2 has increased slightly as well. But moving forward to the 10th, 11, 12, and even the 13th generation of uh, Core i9s, you can see here, the TDP has remained consistent throughout, but the PL2, meaning in terms of the spikes of uh, increased demands for more power, more processing computes, has significantly increased dramatically as much as if you were to look at it basically on the chart, uh, almost half uh, addition, another... 50% of increase or actually close to 100% increase here, which is pretty alarming here. And obviously this this can have a a different requirement in terms of, of what type of power supply you're, gen, uh, you're using here. It used to be, you know, for, for 500 watts of power supply is more than enough. Now you're considering 600, 700, 800, all the way to 1,000 watts of power supply. And now with, you know, things like, this and even moving forward the years ahead what would think that you know maybe the norm would be at least minimum a thousand uh watts of power supply is required considering not just the cpu then you have to consider the the, the wattage that the gpu consumes here so you can see that the, the dilemma here and it, it it's the same here with uh the uh, amd's ryzen 7 here so from Ryzen 7, uh, 1800, 2700, and Ryzen 9, 3950, all the way to 5950X, you, you see the, the consistent uh, uh, TDP versus the PL2. But come Ryzen 9, 7950, you can see a sudden jump here. Not as high as Intel here, but obviously Intel is able to maximize the capability here, which tells you that the, the increase of of high-end CPUs is something to take note of in terms of building your own PC here. And if we were to look closely here again, so you can see here in terms of its, uh, what do you call this? Uh, GPUs, on the other hand, uh, you have NVIDIA, the triangle one, you have AMD, the red square, as mentioned, and you can see the, the, the chart here in terms of AMD's power increase from year 2004 all the way to 2024, something in the future, it's growing steadily here, right? And as you can see here for NVIDIA on the other hand, it's not necessarily a direct uh, proportional increase. It's a, There's a slight curve, but nonetheless, both of those companies showcases that the, you know, the, the, the increase has been gradually, uh, the power requirement for, for better powerful gpus has slowly been increasing and obviously combine that with the the, the requirements for your cpu is you know mind-boggling to, to to say the least so the question here is uh is it even necessary to be able to 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 to, to get the desired outcome here and obviously more power 
yes, better performance, but at a high cost. And obviously, with the GPU shortage uh, still persists, and the fact that uh, NVIDIA is releasing their next generation of GPUs, the 40 series, and obviously, you know, if you're planning on update uh, upgrading your 39 30 series GPUs, then you have to update also or upgrade also your power supply here, which is, you know, can be costly here. And, you know, think considering the, the cost here. Ah, yeah. So let me show you here. So uh, here in this next chart, the, the process nodes and GPU designs bring more than just uh, keeping power levels down. So let's, the computation ability per unit of power of top end GPUs uh, is what I'm saying. So let's see here. So you can see here, there's an exponential increase here. So you can see here, uh, uh, both NVIDIA and AMD has a exponential increase in terms of its uh, performance here, which is good. But obviously you're paying for for that uh, extra performance here. Now, it depends on the nature of your using it. If it's for games, maybe you don't need top top tier gaming here but you know for other application whether it's for research for uh for for analyzing a large amounts of data sets then i think that would make sense here let's see if there's any more here yeah uh in terms of nvidia graphics performance here uh let's see here let's go back so you can see here, uh, graphics processors are better than ever as mentioned, but the power levels actually aren't, aren't as bad as mentioned in this article. So their level of energy consumption is still rising, obviously, uh, even ultra budget GPU. So normally utilizing 30 watts or lower have seen significant increases in TDP over the past few years. And as you can see here, both uh, AMD and Nvidia, even though Nvidia has a slightly curve uh increase and then it decreased then it decreased significantly again while on the other hand amd as you can see is slowly uh increasing here as the years pass by and obviously uh the the more uh tdp that it requires so you can see here for as low as less than 20 watts and now it's reaching you know beyond 100 to 120 watts of power consumption which is you know no 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 charm change and imagine you know, if you're maximizing the, the 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 capability of your GPU, both your GPU and your CPU, that tends to add up. And you know, minimum of 500 compute uh, power uh, requirements of 500 watts is not far off. And then, you know, if it were to spike suddenly, so you have to uh, balance that or take that into account when you're building your own PC or buying your own laptops that the, the power capability should be sufficient to be able to, to, to meet those sudden spikes. Otherwise, if it were to jump uh, beyond the capability of your power supply, then it could hurt the lifespan of your computer or could severely destroy your uh, desktop computers here, which is never ideal spending, you know, thousands of dollars, hundreds of tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of pesos. To, to be able to to get the latest uh, uh, performance here. And obviously, let, let's see here. So in terms of uh, power consumption, so this is what I was talking about. So think of if you're trying to play a, a game, in this case, Doom is the example here, just using uh, the highest settings, uh, using 1440p for, for, for your uh, uh, visuals. So you can see here from an, an Radeon, AMD Radeon's RX 6800 with a load watt of a little over 400 watts, which is, you know, still significant. But as you can see here, look at the different models. It's growing steadily here from the 6800 XT, 6900 XT to the RTX 3080, 3080 Ti, 3090. Then RTX 3080, you can see it's growing from 400 to 500. And the ultimate is the uh, MSI RTX 3090 Ti. And, you know, the, the range of uh, load that it could generate from 400 all the way to 700, that's a 300 difference here. And what's interesting here, that the idle watt is for as low as less than 100 watts, right? But if you push the, 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 the GPUs uh, to its limits, you see a sudden, uh, sudden spike here. This is just considering the, the, the load that it needs to, to, to be accommodated to be able to function properly. 
So having a one less than 1,000 watt power supply may not be enough now in the near future, which is kind of scary. Obviously, the cost will be exorbitant if you think about it. So is it even worth it? That's the main question. So obviously, you have to seriously consider the 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 pros and cons of you know getting the best and latest uh, uh components here and speaking of the latest and greatest so you have the latest nvidia's gtx uh, uh geforce rtx 4090 which is touted to have a tdp of 450 watts so that's that's already half of 1000 here so imagine how much load it would generate obviously beyond the the prescribed tdp and then it can go beyond a thousand watts here which is not far off which is obviously brings a whole slew of problems and you know, that's why uh con doing this in long durations like the data mining uh crypto mining sorry not data mining the crypto mining uh process is very taxing on the on the electricity bill here and obviously that's never good for our environment at any situation here so the question here is should you upgrade your PCs and is this the right direction that we're going that uh, we need more power or can we find a way to uh, to optimize it to, to 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 generate the same load performance but yet release uh, less heat if it even if it, if it's possible but uh, I'm not an engineer so it's difficult to, to fathom what it would look like here so we'll we'll wait and see if if you know uh, what the future would look like because you know it would be interesting you know five years from now or ten years from now what, what the tech industry would look like here anyway <coughs> going to our next segment so in terms of gaming still but in this case games that's being popularized and you know translate to tv series which is you know should be ideal because you know you can create a lot of stories in terms of storytelling like from the comic books like how the mcu became so popular nowadays and even the dc uh universe but the problem is translating those stories into a tv a live action series is can can be quite daunting and difficult if it's not done right which is you know the many cases here you have cowboy bebop you know halo you have uh lord of the rings rings on power you know there's been positive review regarding you know game of thrones here uh, and then there's also news of, you know, creating a series for, uh, what do you call this? Uh, Mass Effect, right? So translating them to based on their, you know, uh, from the original source material is quite difficult here. But, you know, I'm always hopeful here. And in this case, we're talking about the Amazon's foray into creating a Fallout TV show. So, I mean, in Amazon... Uh, Paramount is investing a lot in the known IPs because there's a big gaming community here. But the problem is there's a big community, but they're not trying to target those fans who has been, excuse me, playing the games, who's familiar with the games and thinking that they will cater to a different segment of the audience, which is kind of confusing because if you cannot even target the main fans, of the series whether it's star wars star trek here you can see the results of how you know if fans get pissed off you know they'll stop supporting your uh your content here regardless of how popular the the genre is and here you know obviously the concept of of a follow tv series is very interesting similar to how uh the walking dead is obviously it's a a wasteland not necessarily focused more on zombies but there's a plethora of side characters race that can be interchanged here or added to, to make it more interesting in this uh, infested wasteland that they call it here. And I myself have played the, the, the Fallout 3 series. I was able to finish it and it's very compelling here. And obviously, you have to have the right uh, people to, to helm the, the, sh the show in terms of narrative. Obviously, that's number one. And who plays the protagonist here and who plays the antagonist obviously those should come into picture and not just you know create a mishmash of you know whatever tv series that they deem and say that it's a you know paying homage to the original otherwise you know i, I see another you know investment from amazon going down the drain here apart from the rings of power so but we'll see we'll see anyway so 
So they uh, Fallout has been making plenty of headlines recently thanks to the series celebrating its 25th anniversary that they've been, you know, they've been here for that long, for 25 years. And the post-apocalyptic franchise relates to an upcoming Amazon TV series. So question is, will they do a more uh, story-driven or rather than focus more on the CGI? Because I think they could do either way and make it interesting, compelling enough because in the case of uh, The Walking Dead, they didn't do much any CGI. I mean, it didn't don't need to do that because the story in itself can be compelling, meaning dealings with... You know the the interaction with the main characters, the the world they live in, you know, could be plenty enough uh, of of interest to 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 get the people to watch it. I mean, there were there's news, right? The 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 Last of Us is another apocalyptic uh, story focusing on Joel and Ellie is another interesting concept. Now, will they do justice based on the game, or will they you know destroy the franchise because of changing the narrative to fit the current society whatever they want to pursue here but we'll see anyway so it mentions that bethesda studios which is which owns the the the, the franchise for the fallout series not successful all the time uh include will include a live action so how question is when will they be able to release this tv show or series uh, one can only hope because you know take the time to to create an interesting premise and you know go with it because if there's not an interesting premise and you know, imagine waking up in the future and then you you know you don't know what happened here i think you know similar to a tv series the last man on earth i think it's more of co comedy slash more comedy i think as i recall but anyway so there, there's a lot of things that they could play around with, but they have to do it right. Otherwise, you know, another misstep here could could generate a PR nightmare here. Meaning, uh, obviously for Bethesda, you know, it's it, it's it's a money making machine because using the IP, you know, the, uh, Amazon has to pay the 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 company here, which is now owned by Microsoft and. Obviously, you know, for those companies, if if they want to do justice, it's just my humble opinion that. If they were to follow any of those series from the Fallout original, Fallout 3, Fallout 4, or even Fallout Vegas, I mean, follow that same storyline, story arc, you know, I think people would still love that show. But trying to change too much of the content that it's nowhere close to what a Fallout series would look like, you know, I mean, consider the mutants there would be interesting in itself, how, how they would create the narrative the interaction the conflict within those stories similar to how game of thrones i mean you know george r r martin created a, a very strong narrative in terms of you know conflicts within different race within the race different people different individuals you know and makes for a compelling storytelling and you know there's the formula of how to do it it's just many of the studios or the decision makers choose not not to don't, don't doesn't seem want to be successful they, they just want to waste their resources and waste throw out a, a, a lot of money here but but we'll, we'll see you know uh hopefully uh they're planning on releasing the series uh early next year so they've already started filming this year uh, and hopefully we can see it sometime early next year so hopefully 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 uh one can always be hopeful here Anyway, uh, segueing now to investments here uh, in terms of, uh, you know, the, the so-called Warren Buffett of Asia, or in this case, China. Uh, but, you know, that, that's, that's a very big, uh, what do you call this? Uh, it says a big ambition of trying to replicate what Warren Buffett has done here. But uh, in this case, a billionaire uh, conglomerate uh, co-founder, uh, Guo Guangchang, uh founder of Fosun uh company the conglomerate that it is and obviously for those who are not familiar who uh, warren buffett is is known for making a ton of money from investing here from from the when he was younger all the way to where he is now he's in his 90s and he's still raking in money tons of money here by you know not inside not taking risk but taking a calculated risk that would benefit him not just in the short run but also in the long run. And in Mr. Guo here, trying to say, or, or, or the article is trying to say that he's the Warren, equivalent Warren Buffett of Asia, 
well, obviously based on this article is a contrary to what uh, is being depicted here. So let's take a closer look. So according to Forbes.com, there's a fire sale occurring uh, in terms of trying to sell his assets because of the debt he has accumulated and he cannot pay. So he has to sell his divestitures in many holdings to be able to pay his immediate uh, immediate debt here, which is goes to show, oh, did, 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 did Mr. Guo or the company uh, make uh, one wrong move or a plethora of moves that led to this point here? So let's, let's take a closer look here. So the debt crisis that the China market real estate has uh, has occurred and has now occur uh, has affected several companies, right? Many billionaires in China has now uh, many of their networks valuation, the status of the company has plummeted significantly, and another one has I would say bite the dust, but one of the biggest conglomerates is Fosun, as mentioned. Uh, which is an owner of an English Premier League soccer team. And Portugal's largest bank and club Med uh, can no longer raise capital, so it must sell off its asset before it defaults on its short-term debts here, which is pretty concerning here. And you know, as mentioned here, Mr. Guo Guangchang, the billionaire co-founder of Chinese conglomerate Fo Sun, likes to say that he emulates uh, Warren Buffett. Well, if emulating Warren Buffett, if it's his mantra, then he hasn't done justice to what uh, uh, what do you call this? What Warren Buffett has, you know, communicated for 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 several years and decades here, because obviously one one of the thinkings of Mr. Buffett here uh, is you know choosing the right investments, not just for the short run, but in the long run here, and his strategy is always in the long game, not just in the short term game here. And if it provides us a certain return based on his computation, on his valuation of a company, if it's a good investment, then it can withstand any difficulties here. And obviously, investing in the stock, not in the stock market, but in the real estate can be a very fickle uh, situation here. And as you, you've seen in years past, the, the the financial crisis, you know, the, the bubble that happened in the United States and Actually, even Warren Buffett invested in the real estate early on in his career in way back in the early 90s, 80s, or, or even before, and now has shifted to a different, I would say different model, but different industries that, you know, has done him well into his late 90s and, and, and hopefully beyond. And obviously being calculated, you know, doing the research has benefited him tremendously and you know, he makes no qualms about it with him and Mr. Charlie Munger in terms of, you know, what are the basic principles of investing, uh, principles, concepts, and, you know, uh, I think one of his uh, videos that was showcased that he doesn't believe too much in diversification, not that he's not diversified, but in terms of focusing what would generate the, the, the most return for your investment, you know, obviously for a small uh, investor, you have more options here, but in the case of uh, Mr. Warren Buffett, obviously you have a large sums of money that you cannot just simply willy-nilly willy -nilly, uh, invest it in any company here that can be, uh, you know, catastrophic in the long run here. That's why he always mentioned advocates, you know, play the waiting game. Obviously, if you're dealing with hundreds of millions or billions of dollars of money and you're looking for a high good return, you can only select a few companies or waiting for the right time, for the right moment to, to swoop in and being able to take advantage of the situation here. And obviously, in this case, for the Fosun group of company, in this case of Chuo, it, it, Guo, sorry, Guo uh, that hasn't uh, panned out. And obviously, the, the fact that they had to sell off many of their uh, assets here, and as you can see, uh he has sold off a lot of assets so let's take a look here so you can see here uh Fosun's dash for cash as mentioned so you have two four seven companies that he has to divest his uh assets here so that they could just uh survive the the the, the immediate uh problems that he is encountering and if you look closely so 30 million here at Fosun tourism you have uh seven Close to 70 million for flow, almost 300 in, in the liquor, Basino, a little over 300, 
Singtabury, a little over 500 million. Ameritrask, a little over 700 million. And the largest one is 1.2 billion, Lavin Group. So, you know, obviously that's a wasted opportunity that if you've done your investing right, do not want to divest any of your investment unless it's necessary. Meaning, you know, you made a lot, a lot of wrong choices to get to this point. And uh, obviously, uh, can they, can they stave off the, the, the problem or will it persist? Only time can tell. And that's why it's a cautionary tale. Regardless, if you're a small investor or a big investor, making the wrong decision can have a significant impact, not just in your short term, but in your long term capability or flexibility of, of, of making movement in terms of being able to grow your business or expand your business. Expand too much, you know, using your necessary capital. And one of the many things that uh, Mr. Buffett uh, always advocates also is having a cash reserve so that you, you stay remain liquid so that when the opportunity rises, you make the right, uh, hopefully you can make the right choices and invest in those companies. And hopefully those companies can make, can generate you the, 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 the return that you are looking for here. And obviously, uh, if you've done your research right, then you stick with it for as long as you can. And if you don't do it right, then obviously it will come back to bite you later uh, whether it's a year from now or even years down the line here. Well, hopefully they can stay off their, 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 I won't say elimination, but you know, the, the financial crisis that they are involved in right now. We'll see. One is always hopeful. I'll keep you updated with regards to their situation. Next in the hospitality industry, in particular, the restaurant industry, we're in, you know, you may notice, as mentioned, uh, not just in our country, but in many countries that uh, whether it's in the hotel, restaurant business, you know, businesses are operating, yes, but it's not operating at 100% capaci capacity in terms of the, the, the limited manpower here. That's why you may notice uh, it's, it's not as many employees in those establishments and offering the, the, the top tiers uh, of service that one would like to, 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 to enjoy. And obviously, in this case, for restaurants, they are now operating at a shorter uh, time frame in, ten, in terms of, let's say, operating five days a week, maybe four days a week, or if it's eight hours, maybe six hours or even short, depending on their strategy because of the limited manpower here. And obviously, uh, scaling back the, the operation has obviously significant impact for the consumers at the end of the day in terms of, you know, can you dine in, you know, late in the night like you used to be, but it's not offering. And obviously it, it's different if it's for fast food, some would still operate 24 seven, but for typical restaurants, sit down restaurants, uh, you can only operate as long as there's, you know, available manpower in your, uh, in your, in your operations, but that's not always the case here. So even independent restaurants have been hit harder, losing seven and a half weekly hours on average here. So you accumulate that. So it's no wonder, no wonder that, you know, don't expect that the operations will be getting back to its normalcy pre-pandemic. And, you know, even though people are starting to travel back again, even, you know, uh, whether it's in Asia, in, in, in America, or even in Europe, you know, I think that's going to be a persistent persistent problem for the foreseeable future uh, the question here is what's the government going to do to incentivize uh, people to get back you know go back to work or you know uh, help those businesses prosper because obviously a lot of business has to shut down because of the lockdown that occurred uh, years back and you know one would think that you know it's it's a long ways back but it's you know only a year or two away and you know we're still feeling the the, the ramifications of the the pandemic which is you know, it's still ever present here. Anyway, for our last story, speaking of the pandemic still, you know, a lot of, you know, countries has gone back to its normal way of life. Not, not, more, not necessarily all of it, but, you know, some form or, of normalcy, if you want to call it. And our government is considering now removing the mandate for wearing um, face masks uh, indoors. And I think this is a terrible idea. Uh, unless unless they they meet a certain threshold and you know i don't know if, if people would agree but for me you know for for you to be able to confidently say maybe not necessarily make it op uh, optional or make it you know not necessary anymore the question here is 
is the majority of the population vaccinated? I think that's the question that they need to ask themselves. And if it reaches a certain threshold, whether it's 50%, 60%, 70%, or 80%, whatever the percentage is, as long as majority of the population has been vaccinated, then and only then should the government decide or even consider uh, you know, removing that option here. Now, for other countries, you know, they've already removed that mandate, even in Japan. Even though there's no more mandate, people are still wearing their masks. So it's more on a decision from the citizens themselves, whether they're comfortable wearing or not wearing the mask here but for our cases here it's totally different we're here in the philippines in us in an asean country a third world country at that uh, we have limitations here and obviously if we can't even get people vaccinated properly how can we confidently say that you know it's okay not to wear mask here and obviously uh, if people are not majority are not vaccinated then again the rise of cases will obviously automatically go up and we do not want a repeat of what happened during the lockdown. We wasted several months of doing nothing. We didn't take that opportunity to, to, to invest on resources, manpower for our healthcare sector, ensuring we have the necessary uh, vaccines or even before the vaccines, protocol set up so that you know, operations business-wise could, could, could go on despite the lockdown here. But, you know, Hopefully we learn, uh, hopefully the, the, the current administration is learning from the past mistakes and moving forward here. And the question lies now is obviously you cannot have another lockdown here, even if the rise of cases here, which you know can be alarming if you think consider could reach 18,000 you know, cases a day. And if you, you know, add it up in, a, in, a, in just a month, that could be, you know, hundreds, th hundreds of thousands tens of hundreds of thousands or even millions in just you know obviously the, the 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 scary part is it could go out of hand quickly and obviously our our healthcare facilities cannot cope and handle that a lot of uh, uh the volume of people getting sick here and you know what's to be done here obviously prevention is much better rather than just reactionary dealing with the main problem here and you know, for my opinion, and this is just my opinion, and I think you know the the vaccination rate. If if we can say confidently, we have data supporting that majority of our population is vaccinated. At least we're somehow protected, and obviously on top of that, then we have to lay out lay down past, uh, policies and uh, uh, actions that will ensure that if people will to test positive, what are our plans, contingency plans to ensure the safety of all individuals because all lives matters and how can we ensure that this can be avoided is there a way to ensure that uh, everyone's protected do we have the best medicines do we have the best doctors nurses all of those things even facilities and you know once we have that in place so that if in the event in the future hopefully not if another pandemic were to strike we are more than prepared to deal with the situation rather than you know be be caught off guard and you know we were left helpless uh, you know, based on my experience, we were just hoping we don't get sick. And obviously, no one wants to die prematurely. And, you know, if it happens, you know, we could have avoided it in the first place, something like that. I don't know. Could be wrong, but it's just my opinion anyway. And obviously, this can affect also businesses because, you know, if a lot of people get sick, you know, businesses will have to shut down again or people can go to their, you know, uh, business establishment where they frequent, whether it's uh, buying uh, basic commodities, eating out, entertainment, and you know a plethora of things. And obviously, that's not good for the economy either way. So, question is, what's to be done? And obviously, done quickly, but for the betterment of our country or society here. Anyway, that concludes our discussion for today. Come back again on Friday for more business focus live. And if you enjoy this types of content, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. Uh, as always, I'll see you in the next one. Take care.